Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting a goat spawn from Mansions of Madness. from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to another Mansions of Madness painting video. Um, Mansions of Madness is a co-op exploration game where players take on the role of paranormal investigators and go to different locations to investigate different paranormal activities. Um, absolutely love this game. Um, really cool horror, Lovecraftian Cthulhu type theme um, with an excellent app that keeps track of the story. It tells the story um, and stats of the enemies and, and playable characters. Um, so being a, being a horror theme, um, we've got some baddies to, to go up against and our goat spawn here is one of them. Um, she's quite a small... Small mini, a um, little bit of detail, not much going on. Um, but as you can see, um, on the base here, got a couple of spots here for so that the card for each character slips inside the base. Um, got the name there and a couple of numbers that, that are referred to during the game. Um, and then on the back, um, there's a, um, some of them have an ability that's on the back here um, and then a bit of flavor text. So for our goat spawn, this creature is an unholy fusion of human and monster with horns and other bestial features. It possesses an animal strength as well. Now, usually I can't get these cards out once they're in. Um, they're in, but I've actually been able to make a little bit of a start with this one. Um, oh, there we go. Really quite difficult to get out. Um, and yeah, they've got a little bit of artwork there to, to go along with them. Um, the artwork in terms of working on it for painting is not great, but um, not bad sort of thematic wise. Um, and then they've all got this little um, hook in the base there where the, um, while you're playing the game, that can sit in there um, while the, um, obviously don't normally hold it like that. Um, but yeah, while the that enemy is moving around, that can sit there um, and sort of just helps to keep track of, of what they look like. Um, but that can just go, go back in there. Um, so nothing's been done with our goat, sp goat spawn so far, so first step will be to prime her um, using my, um, still using my brush on primer, um, as I've said in all the videos so far, go back and check out the Siphon video, which is episode one in the Zombie 15 series, where I give quite a bit of an explanation there about um, why I'm using a brush on primer as opposed to spray on um, won't be using it for much longer but yeah still still using it at the moment so yeah get on to doing a prime that'll then sit for about 24 or so hours or just until I get back around to um, to painting her um, just so that that'll give it enough time to properly go off and bond to the plastic to, to give a good base for the for the base coat to go on so, yep, so we'll give give goat spawn a prime, um, leave that to, to go off, and then when we come back I'll have a chat about what I'm going to do with her. Alright, so goat spawns had a good bit of time for that prime to go off. Um, it's bonded properly against the plastic now, so it'll um, give a good surface for our base coat to go onto. <clears throat> now, Goat Spawn is v looking like it's going to be a very, very simple one to paint. There's not going to be too much going on with this one, so she'll get through it pretty quickly. Um, just off her artwork. If I can, there it goes. Um, so you can see... It's like on the back, this creature is an unholy fusion of human and monster with horns and other bestial features. It possesses an animal strength as well. So it's a fusion of human and monster. So you can see there's quite a grey sort of skin tone going on. Um, and then a little bit of a um, different colour going on with the um, with the tail there. So all I'm going to basically do with, do with her is a... Um, 
a very, very grey skin tone, similar to what's in the card there. So I'll start with my um, typical skin tone, um, which is just um, tan skin, but mix a lot of grey into it. Um, or actually might go the other way. Use grey and just mix a little bit of this into it. So it's definitely going to be grey, but just with a hint of the skin tone. Um, and then with the tail, um, it'll be, there's a bit of fur on the end there, so it'll be brown. I'm thinking I might make the tail brown the whole way um, till it meets the body um, and then blend it out into the grey. Um, so rather than just having it just brown until that actual point where it meets and then it meets grey, just blend that out a little bit. Um, and yeah, so I might, I might, might just make it the whole all the same colour. So yeah, so it's predominantly just going to be a grey skin tone. A um, little bit of blending in with the with the tail, obviously the hair and the horn, so not going to be too much going on with this one. Um, and then just probably some very, very simple highlighting. Um, so yeah, so just going get to get to doing some pretty simple base coating. I just made a quick little change in the way I'm going to blend um, this. I was going to blend the brown from the tail into the body, but I'm actually going to go with the skin tone into the tail. Um, I just think that'll be an easier way to to blend it and will look more right than going, going the other way. Trying to get an even blend in 360 degrees is going to be a little bit tricky. So I'm going for um, yeah, the, that skin tone back up into the back up into the tail just sort of something like that um, so when blending the way that I always go about it easiest way that I found to do it is to blend perpendicular to the direction of the actual blend so because I'm going from the gray of the skin here to the brown of the tail here instead of blending in the direction Instead, sorry, uh, so instead of working the brush in the direction of the blend, I work the brush perpendicular to the direction of the blend. So if the blend is going this way, so if we think of my finger, if we're going from grey here to brown here, don't blend that way or don't work the brush that way, work the brush perpendicular to the blend and that way you'll get a gradual transition rather than trying to basically smear the grey from here to the brown there and as you blend as you work this way you'll keep picking up the grey and it'll just sort of start working into the brown but you're getting less and less and less grey each time you put the brush down and picking up more and more and more brown until it just fades from the grey into the brown or any color that you're doing there. So if you then imagine that her tail is now like my finger, um, working from, so if this is the knuckle end and my nail end, so knuckle end, nail end, working perpendicular to that, um, that just helps get a good, um, a good smooth transition.
And when I did the second coat for her skin, I mixed in just a touch more of the the skin tone. Um, I wanted it to be just a little less grey than than what it was. Um, now with the blend here, um, so obviously the first blend that I did from her body into the tail um, was more grey. So then when I started to paint the tail, uh, because the skin tone had changed just slightly, um, that uh, paint that I put around her tail was obviously a different colour. So then all I've done there is just wash the um, some of the paint off the bristles. So I've gotten the bristles mostly with water and then just feathered that edge out until the edge where I'd done the second coat just as it got pushed further and further up the tail, it was less and less and less paint until it disappeared, and then it's just feathered out into that um into the original um uh, skin tone that I had. Um, so that just saves having to having to do that blend again. Um, and then also just quickly um, when I painted, changed the. Um, the colour of the the hair part on the end of the tail. All I did there was I took the same brown um, for her tail, which is just the the one brown that I've got, um, muddy brown, and I just mixed in some of the the skin tone that I got, just the tan skin, um, just so it kept it like definitely a brown, um, but just lightened it off a little bit. Um, and I might actually lighten it with a little bit of white as well, just to differentiate a little bit more from the rest of the tail. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to stop there and just mention how I how I feathered that um, the the second skin tone into the first, so I didn't have to re-blend into the brown. Instead of adding white, I just put um, more of the skin tone in this time, um, and that's looking looking better, a bit brighter. Um, so yeah, so this is mostly the mostly the tan skin with um, with a bit of brown in it, so it matches the the rest of the tail, but is a bit different. So I'm going to be painting the hair now. Um, I've also painted um, one of the child of the goats. Um, well, child of the goat is, is his name. Sounds funny to, to say it singular. But anyway, um, so this is a goat spawn. And when I painted the hair of the child of the goat, um, I did a reddy brown colour. And so I'm going to pick the same colour for the goat spawn's hair. Um, because like, there's no mention of this in the game, but I'm just sort of thinking, well, maybe a child of the goat, goat spawn, they're obviously tied together somehow. Maybe they've sort of been possessed somehow. And so maybe they were just regular girls and they've been been possessed. Um, so by having the same colour hair, even though I mean in real life, they wouldn't necessarily have the same colour hair, but it just kind of ties them, it's a way of tying them together um, so that it kind of looks like that they actually do belong together and maybe, um, you know, if they were from a village or something like that, they were both regular people at one point and then got possessed and changed into the into the state that they are now. So I'm going to go the same colour hair um, just as a just as a way of of tying them together.
uh, blending with those horns took way, way longer than what it should have. Um, I think the problem there was that I put the paint on too thick for the horns in the first place, the bone colour, um, so that then when I put, and I just used the skin tone just for the top of the horns, I just thought that would sort of, would look right. Um, I was happy with the colour, but I think because I could only sort of put that kind of jab around the top, it just, it wasn't blending in because it was just too little paint with the skin tone and too much paint with the bone colour. So what I ended up doing was on my palette I mixed up a transitional tone so I just mixed some of the bone in with the skin tone um, just to then sort of work that around the line where the um, skin tone met the bone colour and then at that point then blended down and that sort of seemed to work. Um, so what I'm going to do now is the same thing I did with the skin tone on the child of the goat and I'm going to do a wash on the skin um, but it's going to be a mix of Reichlin flesh shade and Nuln oil just so because um, what I'm going for with the skin tone with um, with these two is that it looks like all of the warmth has um, uh, uh, the warm tone has come out of the skin. Um, so because it's sort of been, well, maybe not hurt as much because she's got a, got a tail, but, you know, might have been um, possessed or something like that, um, that life has just sort of been sucked out of them. So that's the, the look I'm going for with the tone. So I want there to still be a skin tone element to it, but I want it to be dulled down and keep this sort of grey kind of look. Um, what happened with the child of the goat was that it actually dried darker than what it looked like when it first went on, which ended up being okay because then when I highlighted back up with the skin tone I was trying to use, um, it then worked. So I might need to do that here, but yeah, I'm going to try and go a little bit thinner um, so that it doesn't, um, yeah, dry quite so dark. added a good bit of definition there. Um, it might do the same thing as the child of the goat where it dries a bit darker than how it's looking wet, but I'm um, not happy with how that's looking. Um, so yeah, so the next steps is going to be um, to do some highlighting um, and a bit of dry brushing on the hair. Um, so what I might do now, um, because with all of the human form creatures, I'm using a ghrelin earth on the base. Um, oh, there it is just there. Um, just a ghrelin earth. Um, and the idea of this is that you put it on really, really thick, and when it dries, it cracks. So if you left it just as the way, um, like if you put it on a base and then let it dry and did nothing to it, it would look like dry, cracked earth. Um, but what I'm then going to be doing is um, blending some greys, blacks, and whites together. Um, to then make it look like cracked stone. So, oh yeah, that's for all the all the human forms. Um, but before I do that, I need to put some prime down on the base um, so that I'm not painting this directly onto the plastic because this isn't made to stick to plastic. So um, when I put the prime down, I'm going to give it a bit of an uneven edge, um, like a bit of a bit of a curved sort of edge, so that then when I paint it, um, it will then give the illusion that it goes beyond the limit of what I've painted, whereas if it had just a hard, really sort of clearly defined edge, um, you don't sort of get that effect so much. So yeah, so I'm just going to put the prime down now just for this step, um, so that then when I've finished highlighting, I can then go straight on to putting down the agrella nerf. So that wash all over the skin has dried now and added a nice bit of contrast and depth 
there, um, darken it off just sort of pretty much pretty well the way I wanted so that now that I'm going to highlight back up to the base skin tone that I used, um, that'll add a good bit of contrast, you know, on top of the legs, on top of the shoulders, just those spots where the light's going to be catching, um, and then down into um, down into those um, recesses where where there's some more shadows, just like along the um, that crease in there at the top of her leg, just different spots like that. That's so happy with that. And then also the primes. Um, the primer's gone off there, um, ready for um, the Agrellan Earth. Um, just that one there to to go on. So all the human sort of looking minis um, are having this on the base. So the idea with this is that um, it goes on, painted on really, really thick, and then as it dries, it cracks. And then if it was left like straight from the, from the pot, um, it would then look like dried cracked earth but I'm going to paint um, a blend of greys and blacks and whites to um, make it look like stone or concrete sort of look. Um, but yeah, so just going to be highlighting um, and then and then putting this on the base. So just for highlighting, the way that I'm um, practicing some highlighting at the moment is just use, sorry, just using a feathering technique so I'm just going to be using the just back to the base coat, just that sort of grey skin tone um, and then I'm just going to be painting that where the light would be catching so like here on top of the leg on top of the shoulders hands just those sorts of spots where the highest concentration of lights going to be um, and then just wash the paint off um, and have the bristles wet um, and then there's two ways you can do that either um, with your with your paint water or you can use the the horrible habit that I've gotten into or actually lick the lick the bristles um, and then just feather the edge of the paint out to the point where there's no more paint to, to spread um, and then that'll just give a nice transition from the highlighted tone um, down to um, down into the recesses um, where the wash is there um, and then um, then I can lighten off that skin tone, um, go along that point where the, the highest point of the light concentration would be, and then just feather it a bit less, then lighten it off again and feather less and just keep feathering less as more and more white goes in um, just till I get that that um, level of contrast that I want. Um, so, yeah, so that's just the way that I'm going about it at the moment. It's been working pretty well, so I'm going to keep working on that technique. Um, and, yeah, just going to do that for all the highlighting and then I'll get into that base. So there's some simple highlighting done there just with that feathering technique um, and by the time I got out to the tips of the knees and the tips of the shoulders that was pretty much just white being blended in so um, every kind of pass just had a little bit more white blended in until I got to almost pure white right where um, most of the light's going to be hitting. Um, now I'm going to be um, also highlighting her hair which I forgot to mention before and that's just going to be a simple dry brush so what I'm going to do is um, mix up just the same um, hair colour which was um, red and brown mixed together mostly red with a bit of brown and then just lighten it off a touch and then just hit 
most of it just to bring out the texture and then in the same kind of fashion with what I did with with the rest of her body um, just mix in that a little bit more white um, and then just don't quite um, highlight as much um, just where you know a um, the next step of light's going to be hitting and then add a bit more white um, highlight a bit less a bit more white highlight a bit less keep repeating that until I get to the point where the highest concentration of light's going to be so that's almost a white highlight um, and that'll just bring that contrast so obviously the the, the points where I'll be finishing is going to be right on the top of the head and just the tip of this section of hair Whoop maybe like that, this section of hair just there. Um, so then it'll give that shadow as just in that section there where it kind of rolls back in sort of towards the head. So that's how I'm gonna dry brush that. Um, and then put on the agrellin earth on the base, put it on nice and thick so it's gonna get a real good crack. Um, and then, then we'll get on to painting that up when it's all dry. dried um, and has dried really really well um, the cracks have come up really really good um, so this is the I think the second the second time you'll be seeing me using the agrill and earth in this series the first time was with ghost and the mistake that I think I made there was that I put it on too thin um, and it just it didn't sort of like it, it, it cracked fine it, it did the job um, but it didn't crack as much as I would have liked it to across the whole base so I really sort of made a, a conscious effort with this one to to paint it much more thickly, much more thick. I don't know if thickly is a word. Um, and, yeah, it's it's really sort of come up well. Um, and I know, like, out here, for example, um, this is where it went on the thickest because it was such a clear um, spot to, to paint it, and that's where the cracks have come up the best. So, yeah, definitely needs to go on thick. So what I'm going to do now is paint the agrell and earth and I'm going to use a base of grey and then wet blend in some blacks and whites to create a stony concretey sort of look um, and that's what I'm doing with all of the sort of human shaped shaped minis so yeah I've just got some some grey some black and some white got some drying retarda mixed in just to um, um, keep the the workable life of it going as much as possible to let me blend as long as I can um, and what I'm going to be, tr be trying to do is where um, um, where the cracks are mostly which is obviously across most of it but um, try and pick out the edges, edges as much as possible with the white where it's going to be catching most of the light um, and then try and concentrate the black a little bit more around the actual base of the of the goat spawn where there might be a bit of shadow um, but also then just naturally um, you know with, with some stone or concrete there's going to be those um, gradients in the colors so just blending that in to try and try and get that effect so yeah gonna get into doing that um, and then after that's dried, I'll then come back and do a matte varnish, um, and then um, then the coat spawn will be done. Um, so just quickly, so the the main thing I'm going to be trying to stay away from doing is getting the the paint to go 
into the cracks because I want to keep that contrast so I want that the cracks to stay black as much as possible uh, it might be hard to avoid because I will be trying to move sort of quite quickly but um yeah I'll be doing my best to just keep the paint on the agrillon earth and not seep in between the cracks um, if it does I'll go back and sort of try and touch up some spots just with some black paint just paint in those cracks but yeah that's what I'm going to try and stay a bit mindful of um, and just for this, I'm just using one of my old brushes. It's just a size four, um, just to um, just to cover the surface pretty quick. If it turns out it's too big, I'll, I'll drop back to one of my smaller ones. of our goat spawn is done so as you can see I just used a base of grey um, and then went blended in some blacks and whites just where I wanted to pick out um, some of the details um, add a little bit of extra light bouncing off the um, the bigger cracks and then um, yeah blended in a little bit more black underneath just to create a little bit of a shadow just to have a bit of contrast and then I went back in afterwards and filled in some black uh, just in those bigger cracks um, and it didn't do it everywhere because I wanted to build some contrast um, and sort of give um, someone who's looking at this their eye a bit of a focus point on the on the base um, so to some of these points here where I paint those black in um, just builds the contrast there adds a bit of extra texture and a little more unevenness to the look of the base um, so it's not quite so uniform looking, but um, yeah, really happy with how that's looking. So now the last step is just to varnish the mini, um, just so that it's got a hard wearing coat on the outside of it, so that it can it can cop a few knocks from um, you know just being in the box and, and general wear and tear from the game. So I'm just using a matte varnish, just um, this one here from Vallejo. Um, and the matte varnish, when it dries, will leave it looking exactly the same as it is now. No reflective um, surfaces at all. Um, but I, I will be grabbing a gloss varnish at some point, so that if I do have some um, some minis um, where if like they've got an open mouth or if there's some blood or something that I want to look a bit wet um, or reflective, um, I'll be using that on there. Um, so yeah, so just a couple of drops of this. It, whoop, sorry, a couple of drops of this. Um, is plenty for a mini of, of this size. So I don't water the um, the varnish down at all. I followed the advice of some people on some videos who said don't water it down, um, and I've done a couple now, and it, it seems to work really well. It doesn't seem to need to be watered down at all. So, yep, so just straight from the bottle, a little bit of water on the bristles, and this is just an older brush that doesn't matter if the bristles get get a bit worn out. So yeah, so just going to apply that all over the mini um, and then I will leave it to dry 
um, and then I'll come back and finish the video. Um, but I'll, I will mention at this point, um, the the first mini that I did varnish was Ghost, who's also the first video in this series. And one thing I did notice after it had dried is that there was one little spot in one of the recesses where I hadn't quite spread the varnish out enough. That's a tiny spot that no one's going to notice unless they go looking for it. But because it had pulled in that recess a little bit, it had dried a bit thick and it, w it had a slight bit of reflectiveness to us to it and it wasn't it didn't dry totally clear um and so yeah that's just a thing to be mindful of is just kind of like when doing a wash just make sure you're looking at where it's settling and make sure it's not settling too thick in in any one spot so yeah just just something to be mindful of but yep so i'll go and put this coat on now and then i'll come back and and finish the video after it's after it's totally dried So with that varnish dry, uh, we can call our goat spawn done. Another one of our Mansions of Madness miniatures finished. So being a matte varnish, it's dried really, really flat. There's no reflection going on. Um, and as I said in the last part of the video, I was really mindful of making sure that I spread the varnish out so I didn't let it pull in any of the recesses. Um, and I can't see any spots where it's dried with any opacity to it. It's, it's, it's all totally clear um, and no reflection going on. So really happy with, with how the miniature's looking. Um, happy with the the stone effect on the base. Um, really simple mini, but but was still good fun to paint. So yep, happy with with that in the end. So thank you very very much for spending some time watching me paint. As always, I really hope you've uh, gotten something out of this video. Um, either you know you're able to take something away to use in your own painting, or just at the very least you've enjoyed watching me painting. Um, and yeah, please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed, um, and then that way you can keep up to date with these videos as they come out. So. Yeah, with that, uh, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.